Okay. Welcome and thank you for joining us this evening for our RFU Council Elections and the role of Council webinar. My name's Ian Renard and I'll be taking us through some housekeeping before handing over to RFU President, His Honour, Jeff Blackett. Um, if you can't hear me, please uh, check your connection. You should be able to hear me. Um, just put something in the chat if you need any help. And to find the chat function, uh, it's on the right. Please make sure uh, today that you set this to all panelists and attendees so that we can all see the conversations and get involved. Once again, welcome to those of you just joining now. We're pleased to have you on our webinar tonight. You'll be able to find the chat function and just please set that to all panelists and attendees so that we can all see the conversations and you can all be a part of everything tonight. Find a, a view that uh, suits you. Uh, the chat box can be moved around. So just find what suits you depending on what device you are on. Welcome to those just joining us now. Fantastic to have you on this webinar tonight. And as I was saying, uh, if you're on a different device, you may see different views. We will have some polls tonight. Um, and on a tablet device, the polls can come up on another pop-up screen. So just something to bear in mind and you'll, you'll need to uh, close them on the tablet. So just something to bear in mind if you're on an iPad or a tablet device. Again, welcome to those just joining. Bit of housekeeping before I hand you over to our RFU president. Um, if any of you experience any technical problems, obviously lots of people are at home now. Internet usage is up by 70%. So that may impact broadband speed. So sometimes you may need to give it a bit longer. Um, but the good news is this webinar is on demand and will be available afterwards. Any questions that you have, we want to hear them, so put them in the chat. Just make sure, as I said earlier, that they're to panelists and attendees. Um, we will endeavour to get round to all your questions tonight, but if we do miss any, um, we will follow that up. Um, we've got some further follow-up information in terms of resources that we will be sending out, um, and you will see uh, a link to some resource in the chat function early on. We are recording this session, so uh, it will be available after for anyone uh, you want to share this with, any club colleagues or CB colleagues you couldn't attend. So it is being recorded and we're going to keep to time. Uh, the webinar will end at 8 p.m. So I'm now going to hand you over to uh, our President, RFU President, His Honour, Jeff Blackett. Thank you very much, Ian. And uh, can I add my welcome to everybody? It's good to see so many people here. I understand we've uh, had over 100 people who've registered. So thanks for taking uh, your interest and, and, and coming to join us. Um, can I start by introducing the panel? Uh, we've got Angus Bajalski, who's the Legal and Governance Director of the RFU. He's a senior solicitor and he's been um, working with the RFU for 11 years. Uh, Paula Carter, she's the council member for Surrey and one of the council elected members on the RFU board. Um, she's got a background in broadcasting and communications and has been a non-executive director and chair of a number of private and public companies. And uh, Ralph Nibs, um, a former rugby player who played most of his career for Bristol and Gloucestershire in the days when the county championship was at its pomp and he, who's also a star for England Sevens. Um, but importantly for tonight, for the last nine years, he's been Head of Human Resources and Welfare at UK Athletics. So welcome to all three of my fellow panel members and thank you for giving up the time uh, tonight. But I hope with this panel, we'll be able to answer all of your questions and provide a wider perspective of being uh, on a national governing body. Um, the aim of today is threefold, really. First, it's to make sure that um, the CBs are equipped 
to do the best they possibly can in attracting a wide number of applicants for the role of RFU council member. Uh, second, it's to provide some information about the role of a council member. And thirdly, we want to talk about increasing the diversity of council. Uh, and this isn't a, a, a matter of compliance with future government directives and targets on diversity. It's a matter of improving the effectiveness of council. We're looking to increase the number of people who may have different perspectives, different life experiences and rugby experiences, different routes into the rugby family. Uh, above all, we want people who are passionate about the game and have got something to give. Uh, so I'm going to give a small amount of background. Can council, before I hand over to Angus, Council uh, today is a very mature and effective body. It's full of highly competent people, um, and sometimes it gets bad press, which is really unmerited. The relationship at the moment between the executive staff, the RFU board and the RFU council is as good and strong as, they, as they've ever been. And this has enabled the RFU to work its way through this awful pandemic. Uh, current council members know that they have an important role to play and that that role can actually be hard work. So those who apply and are successful must be prepared to give a lot of time and effort to the role as council members, who, uh, as council members and particularly uh, replacing those who have all done a first class job. Now tonight we're gonna to conduct uh, three polls in the background as the session proceeds to help us understand uh, what you think about uh, council and, and understand the attendance a bit better. So please take part in the polls. Uh, and I'm about to launch the first one. I'm going to hand over to Ian in a second to la launch the, the first one. Uh, so as Ian does that, let's move to the meat of the session. Uh, and we'll start um, with a look at the role of a council member with Angus. I'll hand over therefore to Angus. So I'm just going to say so thank you, Jeff. I'm just going to launch that poll now. Um, we're going to poll one. So who is on our webinar tonight. We just want to find out who is on our webinar tonight. A CB rep representative involved in the running? Are you a club member interested in the running of an election? Or are you a prospective candidate for election? Or are you other? Votes coming in now, that's brilliant. Keep them coming. Almost there, almost 100%, keep coming. Good stuff. Lovely, just coming up to the last few. Okay, great. I'm gonna end the polling there. I'm gonna share those results with you all. And you can see there, we've got a really good mix tonight of who is on our webinar. 33% around CB representatives involved, club members interested, 15% and a prospective candidate for election, 19%, and other, those are the, that are just interested in this webinar tonight. So that's brilliant. I'll now hand back to Angus. Brilliant, thank, thanks Ian, and thanks very much, Jeff, and, and welcome to everybody. I firstly wanted to just say thank you to everybody for, for making the time on a, um, on a, on a Thursday evening to, to join this. Um, I think in, in my role as the, the sort of legal and governance director around, around this time of year, I get a lot of queries from, from CVs and prospective candidates about how the, the, the council election process works. So some a lot of the sort of technicalities of it and, and a few more sort of general questions. So kind of what, what I thought we'd do this year is take advantage of everybody sort of being on you know, Zoom a lot more and, and take the opportunity to I suppose sort of answer this not on a on a bilateral basis, but to create a bit of space where we can have a bit of discussion about how the how the process works, um, perhaps even sort of sharing some some best practice. Now, as, while, while doing that, we thought it'd be useful to, to set that bit of context, as Jeff said, around the the role of a councilman, what a councilman does, where they where they fit into the the, the organisation of the the RFU and and the game as a whole. So. I think what, what I'd like to do first is, is start with start with that, talk a little bit about the, the role of council, um, the role of the council member. Now I realise a lot of a lot of you will 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 know this. Um, in no way trying to teach um, sort of grandma to suck eggs here, but by giving that bit of context, I think it might be useful then going into the detail of how the, the, the election process works. So um, 
as Ian said, we'll we'll take I see, see a number of sort of questions kind of coming in as we um, as we come along. We'll try and answer them as we as we go. Um, clearly, if we can't get through all of them, what we what we will do is um, produce a note for for everybody who's who's attended um, and answer those as you know as, as as best we can. So, I think with with that in mind, I will. Um, I'll start about um, you know the role of the role of council and why why we have a council what it um, what it does within within the RFU. So I suppose you think about any kind of if you like normal company uh, you know a, a, an O2 or a, um, you know a, a, a Vodafone or a Sky. You know you've you've got your you know, you've got your shelves at the top. You've got the board that does the the you know resp ultimately you know, has its fiduciary responsibility for for the running of the organisation. Then you have the executive staff under underneath that now you know clearly we're um, in a very different sort of organization as a, as a membership based um, based organization and therefore in, in a lot of ways it's much more important that the membership has a voice in the running of the organization now clearly with you know sort of over a thousand member clubs um, you know, not not a similar number of, of non-voting um, member clubs it's very difficult for for clubs to have that sort of that, that, that direct voice. So that reason council becomes incredibly important because it, as representatives of the game, largely of the club game, but of the game more, more broadly, what council can do is, is shape, um, beyond having a voice, can, can shape the, the policy, the governance, the, the regulation, and sort of hold the board to account is the, the phrase often, often used. So I'm going to pick up those roles sort of in, individually and then, then ask, you know, particularly, you know, Paula and, and Jeff and, and also sort of Ralph as a non-council member for, you know, views about how, how this works. So I think pick, picking those three, those three points. So council ultimately is responsible for the, the, the policy and the regulation of the game. So that's a lot more around the, the rugby itself. So what, what, what does that mean? So the, the, the regulations will be everything from the size of the leagues in the in the adult game you know a number of you may be involved in the um in the future competition structure uh, review that's going on at the moment ultimately it's council that sets um how promotional allegation works what any standards required are eligibility rules um size of leagues all that is very much within the um within the remit of, of of council again you know on a more granular basis it's Rules of play in the in the age grade game, um, the ability for yeah you know, children to play up and down, you know I mean a, a real sort of I mean effectively anything you see in the you know in the handbook anything for regulatory matter really is a, a matter for council. So there's a you know a huge responsibility for the, the the running and the governance of the game. What council also does is from a sort of regulatory perspective or, or governance perspective perhaps is is the monitoring and oversight of the board so that again the board have that responsibility for the running of the organization and, and you know Paula perhaps can talk about that as well and, and what, what what council does is monitoring on, on behalf of the member club so that would be when it comes to you know budgets and business plan what the board will do is consult with council around that um, you know on a pretty pretty formal basis regular council meetings there'll be a lot of discussion with uh, the chief executive with with the chair so council needs to understand more than the the, the rugby side of the of the union if you like but but also the the actual sort of day day to day running of it in a, in a more sort of supervisory function and the final part really is around the communication of the game so to do that properly you know what council members need to do is to be able to take messages from from the center you know explain what's going on at the center to the constituent bodies to the cbs to the clubs you know to individual members so very much being you know both you know ambassador but also spokesperson and the conduit for that information but also bringing that back from you know from the clubs um, from the cbs from individuals you know both account formal council meetings but also as importantly um, you know, in informal settings, that having that sort of conduit with with the board and the staff, so you know, views of the game can also be brought back. So, you know, it's those probably three areas that I think that that make the, the council absolutely central to um, to to the organisation and you know and and to the game. So I'll I'll sort of stop there with with my sort of rundown of this, and I think what what might be helpful is perhaps. You know, if I invite you know Jeff and Paula to, to talk a little bit about you know their you know their experience of of council and what that means. So, 
I suppose, Jeff, if I if I can start with you on the you know on the on the government side, particularly in your role as as president, you know, can you, can you perhaps talk a little bit about the you know how the importance you see of um, council's role in in the governance and the regulatory side and and sort of perhaps what that means in in practice. Yeah, I think in in, in reality, some of the people on this um, webinar would be interested in what council members themselves do, and obviously Paula will have experience and can talk about that in a minute, but. Um, I just wanted to stress the importance of the committee structure. So um, regulations don't just appear out of thin air. A lot of the work that's, uh, that, that goes to create the policy behind the regulations comes from subcommittees um, who then feed into standing committees, who then feed into council. And obviously council members are part of all of those three functions. Um, so it's important actually that each council member has a broader view of the game than just um, their, their particular interest. When it comes to the strategy of the union, that's a matter for the board because it's a non-regulatory matter. But the, as, as um, Angus said, the board consult with council and a lot of the consultation is done by great paperwork, but great pieces of paper obviously which explain the strategy and then they come to council and we discuss it and it's important in that respect that council again or individuals bring their perspective so that they can uh, contribute to the consultation and, and quite often following consultation the board may take a different tack or, or change the strategy so that's the framework in which council members um, work but I think Paula is, is going to talk more about in, about personal experience. Yeah. So, so yeah. Paul, I suppose we could. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Jeff, and and uh, and welcome everybody. I, I thought it might be helpful to try and sort of bring this to light a little bit. Um, but I wanted to say two things before um, I, I do that. One is to say uh, what an incredibly rewarding job it is being a council member. Um, you can probably tell by the grin on my face. Um, you know, if you're passionate about rugby, there is nothing better. I have to tell you. Than being a council member because you absolutely are in the heart of it and able to influence um, uh, um, uh, and that's very satisfying both at the you know the micro level and I'll give you a couple of examples of that and, and then you know at, at the very highest level um, uh, and, and the second is to say um, I'm enjoying it so much um, I'm up for a, a, a renewal um, uh, I've only done the job for, for two years and I'm due for uh, re-election, so I'm absolutely in that uh, bracket with several others of you who said um, up for election this year. So I thought I'd give you a sort of flavour of the things I've done in the, in the two years I've been involved, just to um, illustrate the, the kind of richness uh, uh, and the opportunity to, 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 have, um, to have a real influence on the game. Um, so um, I have, um, I've led a review into insolvency, um, looking at uh, how does that impact rugby clubs um, uh, across all levels, so from the, you know, from the professional right down into the, the, um, uh, the, the, the lower levels in the community game. Um, uh, and are our um, ways of dealing with those fit for purpose, and I led a group um, with contributions from within the game uh, at all levels um, uh, and we came up with um, some really good recommendations and, and you know it was a very constructive um, thoughtful um, uh, creative process where people really wanted to be helpful and say look what is it that insolvency um, threatens in terms of the, in the integrity of the game how can we deal with it how can we make our regulations better um, uh, the second thing I wanted to tell you about was sort of at the micro level, um, I had an opportunity to look at uh, a merger of two clubs in um, Devon and Dorset, um, the Dorset Dockers, and I can't remember the other um, club nearby, um, uh, where you're right into the heart of club rugby and, you know, the very real issues of how do you keep clubs going, how do you make it the best environment if you can't keep two clubs going, can you somehow bring them together so that we don't lose players and, and making the regulations work? Uh, so that was really satisfying. And then coming out of that, a sort of process for looking at um, mergers in the future so we can you know, rescue more club players by merging clubs if that's the, you know, if that's the way forward. Um, and uh, the other thing that I found really satisfying um, was being involved in a small group that were looking at um, uh, 
uh, adaptations of the, the laws of the game. So my background in, in the game is as a referee. I refereed for uh, 10 years and then went um, and did disciplinary panels before uh, becoming a council member. And so the ability to sit around with a group of people and um, influence what a adapted laws might look like. And I mean, I was the one saying, hang on, if you're going to run uh, uh, that sort of style of game, it's going to be much faster. Therefore, the referee will want to have more breaks in the game. So that, that sense in which, you know, you can really get hold of our rugby issues and, and influence them um, is a, a flavour of the sort of things um, I've been doing whilst the council member. I think one of the um, thanks, Paul. I think I think one of the the things we sort of talked about is is the um, the importance of you know sort of dialogue and and the the of a, the council member's role in um, you know reaching the you know the, the the clubs and understanding exactly as you say, Paul, those the, those issues that sort of matter you know on, on a you know on a day on a day to day basis. I guess sort of Ralph, for uh, you know for for you, I mean one of the things that's very interesting is how you know how a council member is able to um, you know, reach as wider, you know, as wide a spectrum as, as possible, because clearly there are, you know, club chairs, club honorary secretaries have sort of different routes in through sort of CBs. But, but I guess sort of, well, from, you know, from your sort of experience, a lot of different roles in, in the game, how, how can council members reach that, you know, that sort of broader spectrum of people to get a, a fuller sort of flavour for, you know, the, the, the moods and the, and, and the views and the, the experience within the game? Good evening, everybody. Uh, happy to, to join you. My, my first uh, webinar, so I'm quite excited. A bit, a bit trepidation, but good. We'll see how we go. Um, I suppose that my view, I look at it very simplistically in that uh, our clubs, um, someone said to me recently, I think it was Paul actually, you know, that the clubs are our engine room. That's where we, you know, we get people, that's where we, we filter people through who we want to then go into lead, the, you know, to take positions of, of, of leadership within the game. So I think, uh, our clubs are diverse already. Um, you know, if you go into most clubs, um, it, it's a quite a reflection of, this, of the community often that, that they're in. You often got different, you know, people at different levels in the, in the, in the, in the economy, uh, from owning people's businesses to people working um, for organizations. So you've already got diverse groups within your clubs, I would suggest anyway. So it's more about making people believe that you're actually interested in what they, what they have to say and go out and speak to these people. Um, and I think just by doing that, I think, you know, it, it, encouraging people to participate and encouraging people to believe that their, their voice matters uh, and their opinion matters, and also help them to feel that they can make change. Um, because I think, you know, as you said, the, the council members are conduits um, to, to ensure that, that, that the right messages are, are, are going up and down, um, you know, from, from, from the boards right down to the grassroots. So I think that's the first thing I'd say, just go and speak to people within your clubs is the first thing. Um, the second thing that we, I think a lot of the CBs are already um, starting to do is, you know, the CBs are appointing, you know, equality and diversity leads within their, their CBs to try and, you know, capture different diverse views uh, and ensure that, you know, there's a balance of, of, of opinions coming in. I think in doing that, I would say, speak to these people, um, you know, uh, and if need be, you know, you could also form sort of, um, you know, groups, advisory groups that, you know, you can consult with um, and just ask for their opinion. Um, you know, it, you know, it's good just to go seek different viewpoints, understand uh, their, their, their thought processes um, and then, and then, you know, take it on board. Quite interesting when I, you know, I joined the, the uh, RFU Diversity and Inclusion Working Implementation Group, I spoke to a few of my friends who, you know, in, in rugby, it's quite interesting. A lot of them are saying, why are you going to do that? You know, um, how are you going to make a difference? And I said, well, you know, you've got to make a difference. If you want to be part of the process, you've got to be part of it. It's no good standing to the side. And these are people, it could be coaches, some of them are players. Um, so, you know, the challenge for me is making them believe, making them feel that what I'm doing is making a difference um, and supporting and people recognize that and welcome it. Because I think we have to connect everybody as well because the club, CBs, Councillors, you know, it's quite a diverse group already. It's how you can get connectivity and alignment. I would suggest um, that would be my view, Angus. <laughs> no, thanks, thanks, Ralph. Thank, thanks, Orton. Well, actually, uh, probably most of you can't see this, but quite a lot of questions have been coming through on the on on 
on the chat, I think direct to the panelists. And I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll perhaps take a, take a couple now. Um, there's a few around some of the technicalities of the, the election process, which, which I'll cover when we, when we get there. But I've had a sort of couple of questions around sort of term limits for, for council members. So, you know, and, and are there, you know, are, are there, you know, do these exist and, um, and, and what, what sort of, what the consequence of that has, has been. So um, term limits were put in for, the, the council members put in for the first time in 2018. It was part of sort of Sport England's governance code. Um, so the, the term limits, generally speaking, are a maximum of nine years. So generally sort of three terms of three. Some CBs will set things slightly differently, but, but generally it's sort of nine years with, with a few sort of unwinding some transitional provisions at the moment. Plus um, there are some extensions for people on the, on the board or on the, um, on the presidential ladder. So there's an ability perhaps to serve to serve one more term, but for the for the majority of council members, it's it's been it's been nine years. What we also did was set um, slightly longer terms. So there always used to be, as as many will remember, um, used to be annual elections. And so the the idea of having these um, terms of generally three three years would, you know, give it perhaps a little bit of stability um, in in the short term. So you know, allow um, allow council members to you know, to, to learn, to develop for, you know, for a couple of years to be more, more effective. Because if you think about sort of how, how the timetable sort of generally works, starting in, you know, August time, the election really process starting in January, it's, it's a continual cycle of elections for the, um, for the, for the councilmen and for the, and for the CBs and for the clubs as well. So that we think has been quite, quite, quite effective. It allows councilmen to focus on, um, you know, on the work, if you like, rather than thinking about the, the, the next election. And I think one of the questions was, um, you know, do we think that's been effective putting, putting these term limits in? I mean, certainly we're beginning to see a bit of, um, a bit of turnover um, of council members. I mean, a number that's a, you know, very long time and have been effective, you know, in that, in, in that time. But I mean, ultimately, I think in, you know, in the long term, what we will see is that, that those term limits being very important because it enables more people to, to come on to council a, a bigger sort of turnover in the um, uh, in the in the long term. Um, another sort of couple of questions about sort of qualifications and, and other things. Now I'll come on to some of this you know a bit later, but 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 in short, no, there, I mean there are no absolute qualifications that you know someone has to do X or Y to be um, to be a council member. Um, I mean, clearly, you know, the, the, the knowledge and, and passion of the game, you've sort of got to have to, to, to do it. But, you know, there, there's no particular course that you've had to done or, or, or a qualification. One of the questions around the, the leadership and union um, programme that's been run by, by the union over the last few years. I mean, that sort of thing exactly is designed to, to help people to, to develop in, in, a, you know, in a broader, you know, in a, in a broader sense. And we're beginning to see you know, people have been through that program coming both onto onto CBs and onto um, and and then onto council. So, um, Becky, I think that was a question from you. So, it, yes, that that sort of um, that sort of program absolutely is the sort of thing that would be um, that would be really useful. Um, I think someone said, "You know, turnover is good. New ideas." Well, yes, it, you know, it is, and I think there's, you know, that 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 sort of thing is it is important. I mean, you know. Clearly, you know, Paul having served for, for a couple of years, Jeff having been on council for much longer, you know, you need that balance is important. And I think there is an element of um, individuals having been on for, for a while to understand the, the structure and be, you know, be, be effective. But, but all these things are balanced, as, you know, as Ralph rightly says, the, the diversity of thought um, being absolutely central here, um, that, you know, pe people challenging and, and that, element of, um, that element of turnover is, is, is important. Uh, a couple of questions coming in around sort of role dis dis descriptions. Um, yeah, so there, there is a, um, a role description. Um, we have on our on our website, and, and Ian, perhaps you, you might put this in the in the chat. Um, we've had for a, for a couple of years um, uh, a, a document that that sort of assists with the, the election process, setting out the um, timetables, other things, and that's contained a, a sort of outline role role description. So that's got, I mean, really, I suppose what I've, what I've talked about a little, what, what Paula and, and Jeff has, but sets out in perhaps a little bit more, more detail. 
Um, and again, we, we'll, we'll send this out um, to all attendees um, afterwards. Um, and code of conduct was another another question. Yes, there is a code of code of conduct that that was put in uh, about eighteen. Well, it's come up two years ago, um, and it's been it's been useful. Um, I think to give a, a bit of a bit of structure. Um, I mean, there's a range of policies and other things that will apply to um, to council members. Um, I'm keen to move on to the um, the discussion about the, the election process itself. But before I do, there's there's a question that's come through around what what sort of training um, councillors get when when they come, because clearly not 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 everybody who, who comes onto council has been in the almost the, the sort of volunteer structure through through CVs and, and others. So um, perhaps I know Jeff might and you might want to sort of perhaps talk about some of the sort of mentoring that goes on for council members and and you know Paula perhaps to if, if you might sort of talk about you know how you've seen um, the, the training and mentoring um, as, a, as a as a sort of relatively new council member. Yeah can I just reiterate what you said uh, Angus about um, about the, really the diversity of where people come from. You don't, you don't need to be highly qualified in every, anything. You need to be really passionate about rugby. Um, and when you come to the RFU as a council member, there'll be a niche for you somewhere. There's, there's if you're a governance guru, there's governance, there's game development, there's all, all sorts of things that you'll be able to bring your particular skills to. But what we do do is we try to, a, a new member, council member is inducted into the union, um, obviously visiting uh, normal visits to, to the staff and that sort of thing and we allocate a mentor to each new council member um, for the first year who, who who basically holds his or her hand um, as they go through the year and is a point of contact when there's a, a, any difficulty and that seems to work pretty well. Paula? Yes I mean I, you know I had a sort of odd uh, induction in the um, uh, it seemed to it seemed to happen quite quickly, and the, um, uh, there were there were meetings I was sort of thrown into straight away. I mean, my sense is the RFU is really really keen for you to contribute straight away. There's no sense in which you have to, you know, patiently wait until you've reached, uh, you know, your three year mark before you can put your hand up. You can absolutely, you know, get stuck in straight away, um, and 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 I did that. Um, and the whole um, uh, organisation is there to support you. And uh, you simply have to say, Angus, can you explain to me, you know, what the PGA is? And you will get the document sent to you and you will, you know, you'll get that briefing straight away. So there is no part of the organisation that's not available to you to help kind of help you learn. And there's no individual that's not there to try and get you um, you know, up to speed. It's absolutely what everybody wants is for council members to, to be contributing um, straight away. And, and I just wanted to pick up a point, I think it was um, Nigel uh, Frey who sort of talked about, you know, are, are the old timers now on the way out? I mean, my experience of council has been uh, not at all, I think, what I was led to believe. Um, I found council to be a, um, a thoughtful, um, creative, uh, flexible, uh, responsive body. I mean, some of the work that's been done in the last nine months when we've had to go at breakneck speed, you know, completely reimagine what the competition um, looked like, completely reimagine what the game looks like, um, you know, get that done in consultation with with the club has been phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, um, and and I have been really impressed by how much uh, council have contributed to that and how how. Sort of how thoughtful a body it is. I expected it to be rather strident as a body, but actually it's not at all. It's just a, it's a group of uh, you know, people who share a passion for the game and want the game to be as successful as it can. Um, uh, and that's pretty much you know the, the criteria that you need to have first and foremost in your mind if you're thinking about putting a hat in the ring. Cool. I'll, I'll, I'll just do sort of one one more. Um... One more question before sort of another poll and, and, and moving on. An interesting question from, from, from Lou. So what advice do you have for, for CBs in terms of, to paraphrase, you know, identifying potential count, count, council members, developing them, giving them the, you know, the, the, the confidence? Um, so I suppose sort of, you know, Ralph, perhaps, you know, your you know, view of the game and I suppose also what you see in, in, in other sports, you know, what, what could... You know what? What what can CPs do to develop people who 
um, you know, have got a lot to contribute, but may may not have the the sort of confidence to to, to put themselves forward. I would say have a conversation with them <laughs> uh, first. First and foremost, if you think those people is interested, um, if people see something which is afar or you know, and they think there's a door shut, then they look at it and walk away. If they're fearful, if it's open and you're welcoming and you actually want to speak to people and go out of your way to to market and communicate and say you want to communicate with people, then you make it very personal. You know, you 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 speak to them. One of the things we've been we've been wrestling with as as our working group is how can we make you know um, counselors tell their stories? How can we make sure that uh, you know people understand that you know they're human? You know, um, and the role that they do because when they start explaining the roles that they do, and you know, when Paula starts explaining what what she, it, it's very much you think, wow, that sounds amazing. You know, how can I, how can I be part of that? And I think it's it's about um, you know it's about just having a conversation with people and if people wish to put their hands up you know I've already seen um, various questions about people who, who've um, been on you know the, the leadership in in rugby um, you know if people are putting their hands up and there's development programs like that we would want to be putting people in a hopper you know you know they don't have to have specific skills but it just helps you know it helps your confidence if you can at least go through that as a first step uh, and test it uh, and you'll come through and think well actually I've grown I understand it um, and, and it will make you then want to take the next step in the process. So I think there's it is enough um, opportunities. I think it's about embracing people and mentoring people, you know, having those conversations, but but specific people on the councils, whether it's Jeff, whoever it might be, or Paula, and there's people, you will know these people potentially are and what skills they are. And often people, if they don't put themselves forward, you know, I'd say reach out and have that conversation with people by just having that, that personal conversation um, you know, you'll soon find quite quickly whether or not people are up for it or not. Um, and, and you can potentially enable them to come in in a bit of a safety net to, you know, to do, get involved in some of the decision making process and educate them how a club's run and how a CB's run. Um, because, I'm, you know, I guarantee that, uh, you know, if people want to learn, there's enough learning opportunities there to support them as long as we do it in a right manner uh, and support them as best we can. And obviously the RFU your regional development um, uh, guys is always there as, as a support as well. Yeah. Well, thanks, Paula. I mean, I, I see a number of sort of more questions come come in. I think I need to sort of move, move, move us on a little bit. Um, Ian, we're going to have another poll before I go on to the um, the, the details election process itself. So um, it's a little bit of a, um, you know, poll, just a bit of information gathering from, from, from us again. So Ian, if I could hand over to you to, to, no to, problem. to do this. So, which of these do you think is more important? The key responsibilities for a council member are to make decisions on how the game is played and governed. Is it to represent their CBs and clubs in our few discussions and decision decision making? Or is it to provide two way communication between the RFU and clubs, ensuring club input into key decisions or act as an ambassador and advocate for the game? Just a few uh, have voted so far, just keep those votes coming in. Nice, you can see the poll almost there, about 70% completed. Moving up, nice, almost there. Leave it for a couple more seconds. Last few people getting their votes. I'm gonna end the poll now. I'm gonna share those results with you. And there you can see. So a bit of a split there between second answer around represent their CBs and clubs in RFU discussions and decision making and the third providing two-way communication between the RFU and clubs ensuring the clubs have good input into key decisions and I'll stop sharing those results now and hand back to Angus. Interesting I think thank you I think you know, it's, it's easy sometimes, you know, where, where I'm saying, you know, this, this is how this is how I think the, the council should be and, and what have you. But I think to get those views, it's really, really useful. Thank you. Um, so now I want to want to talk a bit about the, the election process it, it, itself. And as, as I said sort of earlier on, around this time of year, I tend to get quite a lot of, of sort of questions and, and queries and, you know, both about the sort of technicalities, but about a sort of bit of best practice for, for the election process. So. What, what I want, what I want to do is I'll, I'll quickly kind of go through um, 
I suppose it's the stuff that must that must happen. There's a sort of mandatory timetable, and then share a few ideas around sort of good practice that that I've seen, um, you know, from from various sort of C, CBs in, in in the last few years. And I think I'm, uh, looking at the attendance list, I might sort of call out a couple of people who who I've seen do do, do things very well. Um, so sort of starting, I suppose, with the basics, sort of who who can stand. Um, I mean, ultimately. You know, I think as, as we've said, this this is open to 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 anybody. There is no sort of en entry criteria, if you like. Um, but the, the key really is a an individual has to be proposed by one club or a CB um, and seconded by by another um, or seconded by the CB. So, you know, it's got to be somebody sort of involved in the, the club game to, to to an extent to be able to, to 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 do that. So that that probably is the one sort of piece of Sort of entry criteria, um, if you like. Um, so then, who can who can vote? Um, and again, it's it's the um, it's the voting member clubs. So the full voting member clubs of the RFU, and we've got obviously the sort of full full list of that. And from time to time, when when CBs ask, we can provide those the, those lists. So again, I suppose I'd I'd say for for people who are um, who want to nominate themselves. Um, Make sure your club is a full voting member, so they can, you know, they they, they can do that, and you can you can check with us sort of centrally, or or, or check, you know, with the chair or, or the on sec or um, the relevant person at, at, at the CB. So the, the the key here is again as a as a membership organisation that the, the focus being on the on, on the clubs and having you know having their voice. So again, who who can vote? So in CBs where there is. Um, uh, where there's one person being elected, so either it's a CB with one council member, so you know um, Sussex or um, Cheshire or wherever it might be. That's that's you know one vote for, for each club on a lot of the the, the larger CB. So Surrey, for example, or Yorkshire or Notts Lington Derby. There's the ability to um, to vote for two for two people. So and again the, the CB. One one of the questions in the chat: Can a um, can a CB um, propose or second two people. Yes, in in those in those circumstances where two people up in election, so in Surrey, for example, yes, the CB could propose or or, or second um, to two different people. So the 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 the, the timetable and, and and again this this is where we've seen a um, sort of CBs come a little bit un, un, unstuck over the years is is the the, the timetable and again this. This is all about sort of fairness, so it has to be, you know, we have to enforce this pretty, pretty, pretty rigorously. So the, the nominations need to be sent in and received by the CBs not later than the 1st of March. So we've got a, um, just over a month or so. And, and again, that we've, we've got to be strict on this because um, I know I've, I sort of had to have some difficult conversations with, with CBs in the past because Oh, you know, second of March is that all right? Is that close enough? Is the third? Is the fourth? And look, it's it it it's ultimately it's an election process to to roles that are hugely important unions. So we've got to be absolutely sort of on it. Um, the next important deadline is the fifteenth of March, which is the the latest date that the CB has to send out um the details of who's standing to all the clubs who can who can vote. Now, I'll come in come in on in a second to what that actually um actually looks like. And then the final date is the election has to happen by the 28th of March. So there's a, a, a little bit of a, a sort of window um, window there. And then after that, then um, we get informed by, by the CB and then the, the, the council member, the either new or, or re-elected council member, starts their term office 1st of, um, of August. So those are, those are the sort of hard and fast deadlines. Um, but there are, I suppose, a sort of couple of other Bits of sort of best best practice that fit in along that and uh, along the way. So, while the the CB has to send out the the details of the the people to be um, uh, of the candidates by by the fifteenth of March, what what does that mean and what what does that look like? Now, you know, strictly under the rules, it's frankly it's just the name, right? That's that's the most the most basic. But what we found has worked very well in you know a number of CBs is is to is to Give some guidance around what what gets sent out. Now, again, fairness is the important thing here to make sure that everybody has, you know, all candidates have the, the same opportunity. 
So what we would recommend is, is some guidelines around what that what that can be. So we'd suggest something like a perhaps a two-page manifesto. It's the, the person's sort of CV statements, their, you know, their 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 aims. Um, and again, it, it stops sort of somebody sending in 50 pages, another one feeling that they could only do your standard one, one page. So giving that bit of guidance. So, you know, both the individuals can do can have the same opportunity, but also the, the, the clubs who will ultimately be voting these people in can compare like for, you know, like for like. What we do recommend as well, and we've, we've seen, you know, in one CB in, in, in particular, a little bit of an issue where what candidates will seek to do is they know who else is standing. So their sort of statement becomes, well, I'm better than X. And well, in fact, X doesn't know very much about this and that and then the other. So I guess what we'd encourage the CVs to, to, to do is where individuals will put in their, their documentation to be circulated to the clubs. It's about them. It's not about the, the other candidates. You know, you don't find yourself in a sort of American election type um, type situation. So. Again, the, the stuff isn't in the rules. It's not mandatory, but in the interest of, of fairness and openness and, and having the best sort of process, we that's what we recommend to, to, to CBs. Also, frankly, it will stop the arguments and discussions and the problems afterwards. If everybody feels they've had a fair go, then hopefully what that stops is the next month or two of correspondence with the CV chair, with the honorary secretary about an unfairness of the, of the, of the process. So that, that's what we'd, we'd advise in terms of sending out um, information. Then the second part is how, how the vote works. Now, the, the rules allow a couple of different options um, and CBs do things in different ways. Um, what often used to happen, I think still a number of CBs do, I think, I think Sussex did this in, in their last elections, effectively do it all at a club meeting. So you have some old school hustings, the candidates sort of stand up, give their pitch, and then you have the vote then and there, you know, on the night. Um, a lot of that works very well. Um, clearly, in, in larger CVs with much more travel differences, that's been difficult. And clearly, where we are um, with COVID, I mean, realistically, that that's not really possible at, at, at all. What, what a lot of, uh, I think, the vast majority of CVs will do is just have votes by, you know, by post or realistically by by email. So the email will go out from from the CV to to all of the clubs. Um, and then the responses come in back, back by email. Again, I mean, works, you know, it's much more in, in a lot of ways, transparent, you know, clear um, and, and fair. So, um, but what what we have seen, um, and it's interesting, I, was, I, was, I talked to um, John Powell in, um, in Cheshire about this and what they're going to do, which I think is a really good idea and, and something we've, um, we've proposed in, in the documentation that, um, that we've prepared. It's almost a bit of a hybrid because as people are more used to having these sort of Zoom or Teams type type meetings. You know, some have election by email, but what you could do is have one or more meet the candidate evenings where, you know, you've got the, um, the candidates able to be there, give their pitch, um, clubs can ask questions, again, either literally sort of vocally or through sort of chat, chat functions. Um, and that sort of thing, I think, could be a, a, a really useful way of doing it because it gives that sort of humanity, um, you know, to it as well. You know, particularly where you know individuals may not be known clearly by by a lot of the clubs, so it just sort of gives people a little bit of a, a, a sort of springboard here. So, um, again, and that's to be run like any other meeting to be chaired, you know, openly, fairly, giving the same questions, the same opportunity. I mean, again, it's probably not ro probably not rocket science, but but again, being being really clear on the rules, um, the rules of engagement um, of how that sort of um, that sort of call will um, will go, um, and I, I suppose what I what I would say after the after the elections, I'd be you know if, if CBs are doing this, I'd be really keen to know to know how it works. Um, again, some some things have gone well, things that um, things that haven't gone well, because the more we can share some of this um, some of this best practice, the better all these processes are are, are going to be. Um, so a number of sort of questions sort of coming in, Oliver. I'll sort of shuffle them in and have a, have a read through. But a couple of the questions are comments I see sort of coming through around um, whether candidates come come from a the sort of CB structure, because often you will see a you know a chair or an honorary secretary spent a number of years on the CB committee, having built up that experience, then um, coming up to, to council. 
So I guess, you know, Paulie, as you mentioned earlier, you came a sort of slightly, slightly different route, not through that, that sort of CV infrastructure, but a different sort of involvement through the game, through, through refereeing and then through the um, judicial panels. So I suppose I would, a couple of questions, really. I mean, sort of firstly, what, what, what prompted you to, um, you know, enter the, the, the sort of volunteer infrastructure, um, you know, at sort of council level? And, 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 and how did you find that process not, you know, coming a sort of different route than, than many others will, will come through? Yes. Well, I, I see it a slightly different way, actually, Angus. I mean, I, you know, I was a volunteer as a referee um, for 10 years. I was a volunteer as a, a, as a disciplinary panel member for five years. So I feel I was a volunteer. I just volunteered um, uh, through um, a more active involvement with the game, perhaps. Um, and that's sort of my relationship with rugby. I mean, you know, I've always found ways to stay involved with the game. You know, I, I started watching it as a small child, you know, sitting with my dad. Um, I, I played not, not very mu much and not very well at the university because women's rugby wasn't really a thing there. You know, I've been a, a fan. I've been the mother of a, um, you know, junior player. Um, I've been a referee. So it's always, you know, it's always been part of my life. And, uh, you know, at each stage, I thought, how can I stay involved in the game? And it was a sort of natural progression for me when um, there was an opportunity to stand for a council member and a couple of people sort of suggested that I, you know, I might put myself forward. I thought, yes, it's another way to, to contribute to the game and to stay involved with the game. Um, and, um, and actually, you know, the clubs uh, in Surrey knew me very well. I'd been whistling at them and, you know, sanctioning them. Uh, for 15 years uh, so I certainly wasn't on a mission to be liked by them but they absolutely knew I had a, a real passion for the game um, so it, I, I didn't feel it held me back at all. So that's really how um, I think this question for me you know um, is a requirement for, for, a, for a nominee to be on a CB committee or come straight from club I mean I, I hope that answers that 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 question and I, and I think yeah Paul I've probably, I've probably sold you terribly short there by um, by <laughs> not doing your um, um, you know your I suppose there's other the, the other different sorts of sort of vol volunteering through there through the refereeing and the, and, and, and the sort of disciplinary panels so I, I think there, there's sort of a couple of Couple of questions around around that. Hopefully, that um, you know that 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 answers that. Um, I had a sort of question. Um, you know, well, Crockett, you know, is it time to raise the bar and, and ensure minimum requirements are in place for um, for, um, for for council members? Jeff, I'll throw you a difficult question. Give you give you that one. Um, what, what 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 do you think? I mean, is it is it What's so, important in a council? Well, first, of all, I don't know what, first of all, I don't know what raise the bar means um, in terms of whether you mean you could have a degree or A-levels or, or whether you played international rugby or, or whatever. Uh, but, but no, um, I don't think the, the, the bar is you come from um, a background of rugby, you're passionate about it and you want to put something back um, at the top of the game. Th those are the qualifications. And... Um, Rather like rugby, you know, in the, in the old days, in fact, when, when Ralph was a player, you might be a, a solicitor playing with a builder in a rugby team and you're, you're the best of mates um, because you have a job to do in the rugby team. It's, it's the same in, in council. We've got people who are from the professions. We've got people who, who are, are from, from labouring jobs. We had a president um, of the RFU a few years ago uh, who was a lorry driver, but, but we all have the same passion for the game and, and that's the qualification i think if you start putting bars in um then then we're not going to get a diverse organization it will be a uh, a retrograde step uh thanks jeff um so we've got um actually a question direct direct for for you um uh Rev. Oh, Lost it on my my IT is not okay. right. Um, can you offer any? I think you've sort of covered a bit of this bit of this before. But um, so, Ralph, can you offer any tips to CBs to ensure that they have um, diverse um, representatives on on um, on council? Does the hopper need to start sooner? And embrace more people. Um, that's from from Carol. Yeah, I, I suppose the things I'm hearing and and how I'm learning how, how things work is that. Um, you know, everyone who I've seen on the questions of, you know, the, the programs that 
that has been delivered to leadership programs, leadership academy, leadership union is is a good way of getting people into the hopper, uh, getting people to to um, you know come through some type of uh, development program. Um, but also, I suppose if you actually are serious about wanting um, to look at greater diversity or, or change the, the demographic of of of, uh, you know, of the council or the CB, then let it be known. Go out and actually explain it to people and say we we, we are looking to change diversity. We want uh, a, a broader a broader sort of diverse um, group of people on it. If you don't actually go out and explain it to people, they're not aware of it. I think the other thing is interesting. Some of the questions here, you know, are there job descriptions? You know, what do people do? What's the top? Explain that to people. Make it transparent. Make it very simple for people to understand. Um, and explain to people how they can make a difference and why you want them to be part of, uh, um, of, of the process because you think they can make a difference in it and put it in their language so they can see how they can make a difference. Because you know, as long as they've got a passion for the game uh, and they've got something to add, most people must have a part to play just as if anyone wants to play rugby on the field, there's always you know, different shapes and sizes. You know, before you get to a professional game, we all seem to be monsters nowadays. Um, and you know, see if you've got advocates you know, um, different people who, who want to look out and want to see how they can, uh, they can approach people, you know, but also target different people. If you say you want, you know, don't be ashamed to say if you say you want more women on, on the board or if you want people from different, um, um, you know, uh, minority groups, whatever it might be, um, is, you know, just go out there and explain it. As long as the process is fair across the piece, um, you know, you know, go out and communicate explain it to people don't make it be a mystify why what do they do is behind closed doors it's a you know it's an old boys network you know you've got to go out and explain to people and sell it to people if you actively want and make people believe i think that's more of the point make people believe that you're actually interested and you actually want to you know and go to go to your pool of people that you've already got in the club in the clubs you've got a, a hugely diverse pool of people so you know go and use and speak to them and hear what they have to say and, and how how they would want to be involved. I think that's good. But also if you're, 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 you're really looking, then look to what advertise widely, you know, you know, looking, you know, free, you know, volunteer magazines, job magazines, websites, whatever that might be. That's a different way of how you can, you can look at it. Um, you know, you can go and speak to local businesses. Yeah. You know, um, often local businesses will want to be involved in a community in some way and volunteering as part of their corporate social responsibility. That's another way of looking at it. You know, you could go to further education establishments. You know, you get people who come into the area from a completely different background who, who may have liked rugby, played rugby elsewhere, um, and, may, and invite them into your club. You know, there's different ways and means uh, how you can get um, diverse different people, whether it's different ages, um, you know, different backgrounds. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a whole host of, of, of ways that you can do it. So I just think you, you need to do it, but you also, you know, We've got diverse people in the clubs. I think you, you, you cannot just go outside the sport always. Look within the sport and see that people feel that there isn't a glass ceiling. You know, you want people who are part of that to feel that they can uh, be part of uh, supporting a club out its structure, be part of making decision making um, uh, in, in, and be involved in that and want to be involved in that and feel that they can make a difference and they'll be valued. Um, and I think a lot of people won't apply unless you, you go and approach them um, and have a conversation with them. I think Paula said someone, you know, came and spoke to her before she became a counsellor. You know, for me to go and, and put my name forward to be part of the, the you know, the diversity um, uh, implementation group, I would never applied. Someone came and said, Ralph, we think you might have the skills. You've got a rugby background. We know you like the sport. Would you be interested? I'd love to be. Thank you very much. Where do I apply? You know, I want to put my name forward. Um, you know, so, but it's understanding that and, and people having an open door and people going and encouraging people in and, and you know, and make it very transparent and, and market, market, you know, the roles, because these are excellent roles when, you know, you know, we should have job descriptions, we should be out doing campaigns, we should just make people be aware of what we're doing and, 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 and tell people the wonderful things that, that they're up to. Uh, just by the questions that people are asking on this, this webinar tonight shows that we've got to do more of that. We've got to explain a lot more, um, but you can clearly see you know, from what Angus is asking for and, you know, clearly what Jeff is saying, you know, you know, guys, they, 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 they want you to be involved. They want wider um, inclusion. So, you know, it's, it's on us all to, you know, to, um, to help that journey and, and, and be, be the advocates, I would suggest.
No, thanks, thanks, Ralph. And I, th I think that advocacy is, is, is hugely important. Um, just sort of looking through the, um, the the questions, which I, I don't think we're now going to have time to, to go through. But there's there's a there's a lot of interesting things around around that sort of transparency and, and, and advocacy. And, and what what I think we'll we'll do, as we said at the start, is, is sort of respond to these. I mean, some of these are probably very wide open questions. There isn't a sort of quick quick answer to. But um, just thank, thanks for provoking that. That, that that debate I think this could you know in a lot of ways I'd like to talk for, for a lot about some of these some of these topics but um sadly as, as time as time is rapid rapidly um expiring um we had one more poll um which again sort of selfishly is a bit of um a bit of information gathering for um, for, for, for us so um, Angus, Angus, I, can I just can I just interrupt before you do that there's one interesting question about young people which I, I just want to take up because that's obviously part of the diversity. And uh, there was a question from Barry Brakewell, I think it was, who said, uh, what, about, what about the young people, effectively, is the question. But we do have a national, uh, a, a national youth council, um, which shadows the RFU council. Um, and we all, I, I agree that we've got to do more to get that, that player voice into council. And in fact, we're now inviting three members of the national youth council to attend our council meetings as observers. So we're not there yet, but there's no reason why a, a CB or the clubs in the CB, if they so wish, um, couldn't elect a, a younger person onto council. He or she would be welcome. Absolutely, absolutely. So no, I will I will probably sort of cite some of here, leave, um, uh, let, let sort of hand over to Ian to do to do the poll and then and then to, to Jeff to, to wrap up. But just I'd, I'd like to say my, my thanks, you know, to, to all those that we've, you know, invite onto onto the panel, and, and also just thank you all for for, for, for attending. And there's a lot of thought provoking thing. I think I'll spend you know, the rest of my evening and tomorrow going through some of these questions and challenge myself. I think on on a lot of what's what's been said. It's been it's been huge useful. So I thank you all so much indeed. Ian, Ian I'll hand over to you for the, for the last poll. Okay, uh, just launched the third poll. So next time there is a council election in your CB. Which do you think will be the most important when choosing who to vote for? Is it the most experienced person from the CB that is appointed? Is it the, the appointment adds to the diversity of the RFU council? The person appointed best fits the job description? Or the person that has the best knowledge of local clubs? Votes coming in now. Almost at 50%. Good stuff, keep the community almost there, 95%. Brilliant, I'm gonna end that poll in there. I'm gonna share the results with you all. You see there now, the majority of the last two, so the person appointed best, who best fits the job description and the person that has the best knowledge of the local clubs. I'll now stop sharing those results and I'll hand over to Jeff to wrap up the session. <clears throat> Well, thanks very much, everybody who's, who's come tonight. There's clearly lots more questions and, and we will get the answers sorted out. Um, but it's great to, to have so much interest. Can I thank the panel members? Um, Ralph, thank you very much for coming. He was once described as one of the silkiest runners of his day. And he's certainly been silky tonight with some of his answers. So thanks, Ralph. And, and Paula, thanks to you as well. Obviously a disciplinarian, you can tell by the way she looks you in the camera and, and answers the questions. Um, thank you. And, and, and Angus, well, he's our resident expert. If you have any more questions, please get in touch with him. But uh, I hope this has been useful to you. Um, these are important positions, really important positions, who have a huge influence uh, on the future of rugby in our country. Uh, we want to get, as I said, a wide range of people and a wide range of views to help shape the, the way the, um, the rugby union goes forward. But thank you very much all, um, and I'll say good night.